Okay, right. Good afternoon, or evening, or morning, or relative time to your location. So, I have been asked multiple times now how I do funnels and domes and other whatever these are, I don't even know, uh, <laughs> to fit on with a boiler like this. Now, there is one approach you could take to this. Uh, for example, you could get a cylinder of, I don't know, a decent amount of triangles, vertices, whatever you want to call them. That'll do. There you go. Boom. And you could scale it down, for example, and then you could put it on top of there. Uh, put it on, on top of there. And then you could, you know, go into edit mode and you could <laughs> select your vertices and pull them down one at a time so that it aligns. Uh, instead, there's a much easier way to do it. Now, I've already done it on this engine, so I'm not going to do it on here, but I'll find an old engine that I need to update, uh, just for an example, because why not? There we go. So this is a really old model. Now, as you can see, this has a funnel and domes the way most people do it, because it's a lot easier of just you make a cylinder, you scale it up slightly at the bottom, extrude it out to the top, scale it down, blah, blah, blah then inset it a bit and extrude that downwards. That's easy, but it, 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 it doesn't really look as good in my experience. So, the way I like to do it, if I just move this out of the way, I will get a new cylinder, ideally not 500 vertices this time. Uh, we'll set about 44, maybe 46, I don't know, that'll do. Nah, we'll set it to 32, actually. The rest of this engine's reasonably... Well, I know, some of it's quite high poly. I mean, ugh. Um, but nonetheless, the, the, the boiler isn't. You you don't want too many, too many triangles if your boiler isn't particularly high poly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm scaling this down to about the size I want the base of it to be. So if I import the funnel from say the model 3 or the dome even better example you may notice that the base of this oh where's it gone there it is the base of this quite a bit wider than the top is it's a good what one of these grid settings i honestly don't know what each grid space iterates by but yeah so it's quite a bit bigger this is eh, probably maybe Eh, roughly the right size. I might scale it down one more. Uh, there we go. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to uh, go into wireframe view. And I'm going to select all of the faces except for the bottom one. I'm then going to delete all the other faces. So we're left with just the bottom face. I'll then move the bottom face up to the middle just because it scales nicely if if i can there we go i like to grid snap things i know most people don't but to each their own now there's quite an easy way to do this from here on so what i tend to do is select this just kind of cylindrical face now go into the modifier tab select add modifier oh there we go and hit uh, where is it now? Shrink wrap. There you go. What the shrink wrap modifier does, I don't know if you've ever seen shrink wrap or vacuum forming, something like that. Engineering students out there will know what I'm talking about. Um, this can be used to sort of, it's almost like if you were applying a vacuum onto the face to pull it down onto the whatever it's making contact with. I'm, I'm sure you could use this to do other things, frankly, I think this is the best utility of it for IR. So the first thing you're going to want to do is select your target with the eyedropper, I find it much easier, to be the firebox of your boiler or, frankly, your boiler or whatever you want it to vacuum form to. You know, if it's your dome or your sand thingy, you'll want it to vacuum form to the, the boiler itself. So you select the boiler then with a the left click. And now it does some weird things. Sometimes, if you have enough vertices in your in your firebox, you can kind of get away with the setting nearest service point. But what this is doing, to the best of my knowledge, is it's putting every face of the cylinder 
or every edge, sorry, of the cylinder onto the nearest edge on the mesh it's shrink wrapping to. Now that is not a good idea in this case because it's quite low poly, the firebox is at least. Sorry, not the firebox, the smoke box. I'm half asleep. To fix this, you can very simply select, uh, instead of nearest surface point, select project. Now what this is going to do is, I honestly don't know how it does it, but it's going to do that. <laughs> there, there's no easy way to say it. It's going to do that. It's going to make it even across the surfaces. I have no clue how it does this, but it does, and it works. So there you go. Now, in its current state, the face is actually still floating up here, as you can see in edit mode. Uh, that's because we have not applied the modifier. So if you hit this drop down over here um, and hit apply, you could also do it as a shape key, but why would you? This is IR. So if you just hit apply, voila. Now your face is deformed quite nastily. From this, we can then go into the side profile view because I'm fancy like that. And when I'm making freelance stuff, which this is, I like to use grid snap so that I know I'm doing something vaguely mathematical, I'm sure. I know a lot of people will dispute that that's a good idea. Frankly, I don't care. It works for me. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select this face, which is a bit weird. You might have a fun time trying to select that. But anyway, I'm then going to hit E to extrude it and I'm going to extrude it maybe two or three squares, perhaps two in this case. Three can work with big boilers, or if you want your fixture to be quite, to, to sort of stick out from the, the boiler itself quite a lot, but I, not really. So then I'm going to extrude this again. I tend to do about two extrusions from this. You're going to create the sort of sloped base that you see on the funnel, if I go to the Model 4, for example, we're going to create this sort of sloping effect. Now, typically, I like to do sort of one kind of medium extrusion that I scale down quite a bit, one smaller extrusion, which I then scale down much less, and one much larger extrusion, which I scale down even probably about the same amount, maybe slightly less than that. That sort of makes this kind of nice gradient. I've done the same on the dome. Oh, no, I haven't. On the dome, I've only done the medium bottom extrusion and the larger top one. If you do a smaller one in the middle, it gives a nicer gradient, but it's it's up to you. It, that just depends how well you want to optimize your model for triangles. From my experience, that isn't as important with IR as textures. So, I'm going to start with this bottom extrusion. I've extruded it about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, something like that. Grid units. That's about enough for me. I'm then going to scale it down to I'm happy with it. This, the, there's no, there's no easy method with with this. You just kind of got to know. I'm going to say maybe about there. That might be a bit much. I'm then going to do one slightly smaller extrusion and scale that down much less. Yeah, that looks about right. At this point, once you're on this smaller extrusion as well, I also find it useful to start to scale down on the Z axis. So, as you can see, this face is kind of deformed on the Z axis, to say the least, or Z if you're American. Yeah, this is very de deformed on this axis. So, what you can do is you can hit S, but don't move your mouse or don't do anything. Oh, I just did. Whoops. You can press right click to cancel while you're scaling. So, you can scale and then press Z or Z on your keyboard. And again, I like to grid snap things, but it's entirely up to you. You can scale it down a little bit, not too much, just a bit. You will now notice that the face becomes slightly less uh, deformed. This is a good thing. I'm now going to extrude this one more time, perhaps a bit more, and scale it down ever so slightly. And now that we're on this final section here, I'm going to scale the Z, no, not the X, the Z, down completely. So I'm going to bring that right to the center till it's absolutely flat. I might make that go even further. There we go. So now we have this nice kind of gradient coming out of the base. You can then do exactly what you would do with any other 
funnel, so I'm just going to move the old one next to it so I know roughly how tall I'm doing. What's the width looking like? Oh, spot on! That is exactly the original width. More or less. Oh, that's... Yeah, there we go. Brilliant. So, you can then extrude the top face as much as you should desire. I'm going to say to about... Mm, oop, wait. About there, maybe. In my case, because this is quite a... <laughs> it's quite a tall funnel. And, uh... I know that most funnels won't be that tall, but... I just... I think this model looks stupid with a short funnel, so... Now... The top part is hard. Even I... I'm not fit to be educating on the top part of the funnel. And... Frankly... The fact that I'm going to attempt to is is probably bigotry, but nonetheless, we'll give it a go. So looking at the funnel I've done here, I tend to like to do kind of the inverse of what I've done here, except ignoring this top part. So I like to do a smaller extrusion that goes out to the side a little bit from the scaling, and then one that goes much more and all the way. So, we'll give that a go now. So, we're going to do one extrusion. You can hit, uh, for me it's Dell, by the by, to focus on things. If you hadn't learned that already, it's very useful. And uh, So, we're going to extrude this out about, mm, we'll say three, because it's a funnel, it's not that big. Scale it up a bit, maybe drag that down one, there we go. It's, there's no right or wrong, it's just doing it until you're happy with it, and it will take trial and error. I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, don't shoot the messenger. It will take time. I mean, that's the case with anything in modelling, though, isn't it, really? So then I'm going to extrude it again, and scale it even further, maybe to about there. Now, I kind of like to extrude it up a bit more after that. Extrude it one more, and scale it. I then sort of like to do an inset by pressing I and scaling down. Don't hold control even if you like grid snap. It will do weird things. There we go, about one meter, maybe. I then like to extrude a bit more, maybe two. Yeah, that'll do. And then I like to perform another inset by about, I don't know, 0.75, maybe? It's, honestly, it's these measurements, there's no precise right or wrong. I just like to do what I'm happy with. There, there really is no no right or wrong. And then I'm going to extrude it down into the body. So that we get a bit of depth and it looks a bit proper. And voila! There's now a funnel there. Where there was not a funnel before. This funnel, I think, this this kind of rim is a bit thick, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the top faces and just drag them down a bit, maybe to about there. Is that better? That's much better. There you go. So, that is how I make funnels. Uh, domes I do slightly differently. I'll show you that as well while I'm here. I have the time. If okay, I'd just like to interject upon myself because I recorded a tutorial of how to do the exact same process for a dome, and I'm going to be entirely honest with you, it's really, it is just the same process at the start, except perhaps that first extrusion vertically upwards, you might want to do that maybe, I don't know, three grid units instead of two, or whatever, you can experiment, give it a go. I will skip to the point where I'm doing the top of the dome, because that's the only bit that's different. Okay, so in hindsight, I decided that I'm actually going to speed around the montage. You can run it in slow speed if you want to see anything different. And I'm going to put it to some kind of cheesy, copyright-free music. So there you go. Have fun. All right, ten four.
fill the immensely awkward silence with one thing. Lemons. So now what I like to do for domes is I like to extrude them a fair ways, I don't know, about maybe mm, there. Further than you think, you can always go back and hit control B to bevel. I then like to sort of bevel till we've got eh, about, I don't know, how does 0.5 meters look in this case? Honestly, yeah, it's, till it's about like that. It's, it's really up to you. It just depends how flat you want the top of your dome to be or how rounded. If you want it more rounded, obviously give more width. If you want it less rounded, give less width. It's, you know, piece of cake. So, voila. I'm going to add a couple of segments. I don't know, I'll say maybe eight segments. That'll do. And there we go. You could also mess around with this if you're highly bored in life. What? Okay, pro tip, alright? I'm not a pro, but I've been told this by... This, this information is 110% certified by the FBI, White House, MI6, all that, right? Okay, so, here, here's a tip. When doing Blender, anything that will keep your sanity is a godsend, okay? So, if going is keeping you sane, do it. Because, believe me, it's just... I'm only at 600 hours, and I think I'm losing my soul. So, yeah. Okay, now we've got a dome in. I've rounded it, I've added some segments, blah, blah, blah. We can then hit solid mode, and voila. There's a dome. That's really, <laughs> that's all there is to it. And if we compare this to the original dome, oh, okay, if I can use Blender. It's a bit bigger than the original. I kind of prefer the new one, but if I wanted to make it look more like the original, I could select all the faces on the top in edit mode, so I get the ones around the back. And I could drag this down to be about the same size. Uh, once again, you, you may have to go into edge select mode and bring these down a bit as well. But honestly, it's just when you're happy with it. Do you know, I genuinely prefer it with a taller dome. But yeah. So there you go. I mean, that's all there is to it. Eventually, I'll go around and I'll do the same thing to these and to these and whatnot. But there you go, that's that's really... Oh, let me put this back in place. Fine, we'll, we'll do this the hard way then. Oh, that's just dumb. I do not like that very much. Now, that isn't because of the way I'm doing the domes. That's because of the way I modeled this bit originally, so don't worry about that. Right, there you go. So that is essentially how I do domes and funnels. I learned this trick from a friend of mine who is a member of the SNS team. So I'm I'm sure along with anything that adds any element of what could be considered quality to any of my models, which frankly is generous but nonetheless and optimistic. Um, anything that can be attributed to quality to do in my models is probably because of advice I've gotten from the SNS team. So uh, the if they don't want me to share this, then sorry if it has to go down. Otherwise, you can thank them, I don't know. I could release some other tutorial videos if this was at all helpful on a couple other things, such as, uh, do, 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 do. Well, such as, I don't know, I might want to make a video explaining the utility of my modular cabs, because frankly, can anyone be bothered to model a cab? Not really. Just make modular ones. It's so much, so much easier. And, I don't know, maybe... Uh, Autism's got a pretty good tutorial for wheel sets and whatnot. Pipes, maybe? Probably not. Don't need it. There's some great ones on that. Honestly, there's not a lot else I can explain that other people can't, really. These lighting settings, actually, that's useful while you're here. Um... I can't remember who shared these, but it wasn't originally their idea for the record. I gave it to them. In fact, I was moderately insulted they didn't thank me for sharing it with them. 
before they, you know, showed it to the world. And I've done it wrong. There we go. These settings are brilliant. They will help you see faults with your models. Once again, this is advice coming from the SNS team, of which I'm not a part of, so yeah, thank them, not me. So that is essentially if you want to see your model in a better light than the default lighting, because let's be real, the default lighting is kind of hideous, that those lighting settings have made a big difference for me. So there you go. Oh, actually, there is one other thing I could do a tutorial on. If anyone wants a tutorial, uh, a tu Bleh. can't speak today. Let me just take a drink and try that again. If anyone wants a tutorial on the cloth, kind of rug, carpet, whatever you want to call it, blanket, ceiling of this cab, then, uh, well, let me know, because I can do that. It's... Is, it, it won't take long to explain. It, it's just a cloth simulation that I saved. Uh, maybe things like a coal load, perhaps. If, if I mean, don't get me wrong. This isn't the most realistic one I've ever done. <laughs> but, you know, if it's useful. Honestly, a anything I can do that people want explaining, I can try. So there you go. And, yeah. So that's all there is to domes and, and funnels. Thank you for watching, I guess. Hope this was of help.